Welcome to the Scalar Learning Podcast, your central hub for all things related to education. Join us every episode for the most up-to-date tips and strategies on how to maximize student potential. Sit back, listen, and enjoy. Scalar Learning, give me that Scalar Learning. Welcome, everybody, to the Scalar Learning Podcast. I am your host, Huzefa Kapadia, and this is the inaugural episode, so I'm so excited to begin recording and finally begin this process. I've been wanting to launch this podcast for the longest time, and it's finally all coming together, and I'm super excited, and I hope you guys get a lot of value and a lot of insights out of it. I'm going to do my best every episode to provide as much amazing and powerful information as possible. And I will also always do my best to get the best guests on here so that they can add to this big pot of incredible information. So I want to start this episode out by talking a little bit about myself and my story and why I'm here today in the world of education versus the world of software engineering or law or any other Uh, things that I suppose I almost went into. And so it's going to be more uh, a little bit about my background education wise and all that and experience as well. So for people who are unfamiliar with my work or my company or anything that I've done, you can get an idea of what I'm about. And hopefully that can give you some insight when deciding whether or not to listen to the show on a regular basis. And I hope you do listen to it on a regular basis. So again, my name is Huzefa Kapadia, and I grew up in Michigan. I'm Indian. I have, uh, my family is from India. We are from Mumbai originally. My dad came here in 1969 to pursue an engineering degree in mechanical engineering. And my mother came soon after, and she is a physician. She is a radiologist. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Indian culture, particularly Indian culture in the U.S., it's very, very common for our generation, essentially the first generation born in the U.S., to pursue careers in either engineering or medicine. And that was kind of the original path that I was on. And I went to the University of Michigan for, I went to a small private school in Michigan for kindergarten through 12th grade called Roper, which is an awesome school. I still love it. I still go back and try and visit when I can. Then I went to the University of Michigan. Again, that's where I grew up. And there I majored in computer science and economics. When I was choosing my major, it wasn't an easy decision. And the reason why is because I had a wide array of interests ranging from music to writing to uh, film. I was starting to get into video production as well. So it was really tough for me to to settle down on something. And I was trying to choose something that I thought would be practical. And so I that's kind of was the impetus for choosing economics. Computer science was actually more of a, of a passion. I had randomly tried a class my junior year in programming, and I loved it. So I said, you know, even though it's a bit late in the game to switch my major, I want to I want to add computer science. And so I did. And then I eventually graduated with a degree in both computer science and economics. Now, after that, I went and worked as a software engineer for about three years for a Michigan based company where I was coding software for jails and other government institutions, which I actually quite liked. I then left to go to law school because I had decided that I wanted to become an attorney. That decision was made after sitting jury duty for a really interesting medical malpractice case. So I went to law school. I graduated from Northwestern University in 2009. And the big thing, I mean, it's still a very lucrative career and a very in-demand position. I the, The hot thing at the time was everybody said you got to go into patent law because if you have an engineering degree that's really the main way in because law firms want to hire people with an engineering degree because they can understand technology and for those of you who are unfamiliar with patent law it's essentially the law related to the protection of ideas and the protection of inventions it's an entire system set up 
to foster innovation by giving essentially exclusive rights to a certain piece of technology once you've invented it for approximately 20 years. And so I went into patent law, specifically patent litigation, where we represent companies and corporations or individuals that either have had their patents infringed and basically their technology taken without permission or without payment, or represent the guys on the other side, guys who are being sued for patent infringement and they feel they've been wrongly accused, etc. And so then I did that for four years, uh, two and a half years in Washington, D.C., and then another year and a half in L.A. for a different firm. So this is when I started to reflect upon my life a little bit. To be honest, is it's relatively solitary. You're in your office a great deal of time, either doing research or writing. You communicate with people, but you're communicating with your team. As you move up through the ranks, you may be delegating more, but it's still a great amount of time spent in an office. And that coupled with the with the realization that the type of work that I was doing was not precisely, it was, it was just not fulfilling to me. And I know for a lot of people it is, and it's just a total personal decision. But for me, I began to recognize that I even, you know, I'd initially hoped that after more and more time in the field, I would start to enjoy it more. And then I soon realized that that probably wasn't going to be the case, but I wanted to try it. I'd spent a significant investment going to law school. So I decided I'd give it a fair try. And I felt that four years, in fact, I felt that two years would probably have been sufficient. But nevertheless, I stayed an additional two years in the field until I finally decided that I wanted to change. So, and this was spurred on by a bit of a sabbatical and some self-reflection. And eventually I decided that I wanted to start something that was my own. I wanted to start a business, even though I had been, was quite terrified of the, of the idea of doing something on my own. I'd always work for somebody or work for a corporation, but I decided I wanted to try it. And once I came to that decision, there was really no choice as to what I was going to start. I wanted to start an education company. It had been something that I had dreamed about starting since I was in college. I had actually began tutoring for for pay in in college for computer science. I remember I had the idea because I had such a hard time in my first computer science programming class. I, I spent so many nights sitting there trying to get the code to work and it seemed so difficult at the time. And then after I'd gone through the course, looking back, it, I could write those programs that had taken me three days. I could write them in an, an hour, maybe two hours because you learn so much going through going through each class. So I said, man, I wish I would have had somebody to guide me along, to help me really pinpoint the bugs and the errors and the things that I had, the, the things that I calculated incorrectly in the code, so I wouldn't have spent hours and hours just trying to find one little bug that continued to evade me for hours and hours, requiring me to buy copious amounts of Red Bull and Diet Coke and whatnot. So I, I went in front of the, I printed out a bunch of flyers, and I went in front of the first day of of the class for the intro class to programming in C++. And as students walked out, I handed out my flyer. And I didn't hear anything for, I think, like two months. Or no, no, not two months, a month. And then I, th- I think I finally got two calls right th- then. It was two days before the first program was due. So people were panicking. They, were having, they realized how difficult it was. And I think they had initially assumed it wouldn't be as bad. Maybe they waited too long to, be, to get started. And that's when I had my first two clients. And it was so much fun. Because I would just sit there and guide them through the process. And I could look at their code and help direct them so that they could find the bugs and find the errors in a very fast way. And in a way that I felt was still very educational as well. And I just thought it was so cool, and I saw a lot of potential in working in an area like that. But of course, and then I actually worked for Kaplan for LSAT prep. I taught a class for for Kaplan. I also worked for them as a private tutor, and I enjoyed that too. And I enjoyed helping programming. But the one thing that I always loved teaching was math, and I can't really explain why I have such an affinity for teaching math effectively. But for whatever reason, I can. And not only that, I love it. It's something that I get a great deal of enjoyment out of. 
And I think it boils down to the fact that most people are terrified of math, think that only certain people are able to do well in mathematics. And I really, I, I disagree with that vehemently. And I love crushing that negative belief. I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of seeing people develop a newfound confidence in mathematics. It's probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever experienced. So fast forward again to 2013. And I said, enough is enough. I want to give it a shot. Let's do it. And that's when I finally cut ties from law altogether and began this incredible journey that has been so interesting, so scary, so bizarre. Um, but at the end of the day, just unforgettable and unbelievable. And now I am working with kids on a regular basis. I'm even teaching at schools for fourth grade mathematics. I'm working with college students. I'm working with a lot of high school students, anywhere from basic elementary mathematics all the way up through calculus. And it's incredible. I mean, on top of that too, I've had the opportunity to develop several online video courses and curriculums for standardized tests. I mean, that's something that I hadn't planned on doing, but it's just things that have come to me along the way as I've gotten more and more involved in this field. And I saw a way that I could analyze and break down standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT. And so I did it. And it's just so cool because I've always had these uh, this love of music. I've had this love of videography. I've had this love of communication and it seems that this new career path and this new business has been able to essentially merge all of these interests, all these varied interests into what I do. Uh, and it, it just feels like, and it has felt like for the last two years, I'd say, that I've, I've done it, that I found exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and exactly what makes me feel alive and happy and excited. So it's great, and I, I, I just couldn't be more grateful to all the mentors that I've had along the way that have worked with me, that have taken me on when I really knew nobody in Los Angeles as far as the education community or how to get clients. I mean, I was a complete babe in the woods, but I just had the assumption that I would figure it out as I went along, which I have, and but not alone. It's been with a great deal of help and assistance from some incredible people that really didn't know me but took a chance on me to give me some guidance and insight and give me some referrals as well, and it's just worked out incredibly. So it's it's been a fun journey. Um, now I split my time primarily between a few different things. I'm either working on developing new video courses. So again, I have a video course on the SAT, ACT, uh, one on the IC coming out soon, which is the independent school entrance exam, specifically for the middle level. I just released a course on vocabulary, which was just a random idea that I had because I love words, I love diction, and I wanted to make, I wanted to see if I could make something that was fun and engaging for kids and adults alike to improve their vocabulary. I made that. And I'm going to, so I'm continuing to do that as well for other standardized tests, GMAT, GRE, so on and so forth for the LSAT. And then I want to make some full length video courses for geometry, algebra two, et cetera, with my style of teaching. I also work privately with a ton of uh, students in the Los Angeles area, primarily on the West side. And that is just a blast. It's, it's one of the most amazing things for a few different reasons. One, I mean, for me particularly, because I like math and I like teaching it, I get to do that on a regular basis, and that in and of itself is rewarding. But a really cool side benefit of being a private tutor is that you get to develop incredible relationships with kids and with parents and with families, and it's, it's just really fun. I'm an extrovert. I'm probably at the highest extreme of an extrovert. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term extrovert, it means somebody who derives their energy from socializing and from conversing with other people. An introvert is the opposite where it's very draining and it's difficult in some sense to converse or interact. So I come to life when I'm in these tutoring sessions or anywhere else out and about 
it really perks me up. So I get to do it on a regular basis and it's part of what I do for a living and it's great. I, I really relish it and really enjoy it. And in addition to that, I write my blog on education, create this podcast, etc. And I'm always looking for new opportunities and new ways to reach out and engage the community and get people more excited about learning. And that's about it. I don't have a degree in education. I just love education. And mathematics is something that, as I said before, I can just teach really adeptly. And I don't know why, but I can. And I'm really glad to be able to make use of that of that talent. As much as I wanted to start this podcast three years ago, right as I began this endeavor and this journey, I didn't feel like it was appropriate because I still lacked a lot of experience. But now it's the perfect time. I've had tons of experience in the last three years because it's all I've been doing. Everything I've been doing has been centered around education. And that's not just during the work hours. It's all the time. I think about it constantly. I'm working on it on weekends, on nights, etc. And it's all consuming. And that's why I feel ready to release this podcast. My aim with this podcast is to give as much free information on the subject of education as possible. And it's really created for parents first and foremost. I imagine that educators, tutors, teachers, professors, and so on and so forth, hopefully can glean a lot of great information from this show. But but the real basis for this show was a vehicle to provide parents with as much information as possible on how to help guide their kids, how to provide mentors for the children, etc. And that's what I'm trying to do here. That's how I will choose my guests. That's how I will choose my topics so that you parents out there can get information from me, somebody who's now had three solid years of full-time experience working with kids and developing curriculums, have somebody like me give you information firsthand. And moreover, not just me, In addition to that, I will be bringing on some amazing guests in upcoming episodes from psychologists to other teachers to other educators to parents and actually students as well so that you can get as much of a well-rounded view of the whole education sphere as possible. So that's it. That's me. That's my intro. That's what I'm all about. That's my story. That's my life. And I hope that gives you an idea of what's in store if you tune back in for some other information, and some other episodes. So again, guys, my name is Josefa Kapadia, and welcome to the Scalar Learning Podcast. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any feedback, questions, insights, if you have a topic you want me to talk about, whatever it may be, feel free to email me at Josefa at ScalarLearning.com. That's H-U-Z as in zebra, E-F as in Fred, A at scalarlearning.com. And you can check out the show notes for every episode at www.scalarlearning.com forward slash podcast. Check it out there. I hope to see you next time. Take it easy. Scalar,